Hello everyone, my name is Actuator70 and today I'm going to show you how to make some Photoshop brushes. So the first thing that you should know how to do is first of all how to define a Photoshop brush and to do that you can uh, select the brush tool which is over here and uh, just make a little design, doesn't really matter what it is. Then uh, select the marquee tool which is this little thing, it looks like a dotted box over here and highlight the area that your brush is in or you can just highlight everything it actually doesn't matter because it'll only pick up the black image and I'll tell you why that is in a little bit then you go to edit you go to define brush preset click that it'll ask you for the brush name just tell it I don't care this is an example so it doesn't matter what you name your brush and press OK now you have your brush to use your brush just press B or select the brush tool then click the little tab and if you're if you don't see your brush scroll through it will be at the very bottom select everything delete it and now you can see your brush and uh, now I want to tell you why it's okay to select everything because Photoshop will only pick up black or grayscale colors except for white it will pick up every grayscale script every it will pick up every grayscale color except for white so if I have a gray color in here let's just add red in here for no reason and um, this is important to note because notice I have red in the picture but when I define my brush it will only come out in gray and see red appears to be a kind of darker shade of gray but yeah white appears to be I mean red appears to be a darker shade of gray and that's because it is converted to grayscale and this is true for all Photoshop brushes except when you use a different color obviously you get that result so just something to keep in mind when you're making Photoshop brushes uh, you can't have color in your Photoshop brushes. How I make a Photoshop brush, or how I start out, is uh, I usually kind of start out with a goal. And that goal can be based off of, I like to base mine off of music, but uh, you can actually base it off of, I'm trying to find a, a preview image or something here. You can actually base it off of uh, something you've seen before, like this. This is pretty cool. I'd like to make a Photoshop brush that would end up looking like that. In fact, I have. It's called Melancholy Brushes, but we're going to forget about that. We're just going to assume that I want to make a brush that will end up making a preview image that looks like this. So that is my goal. Very simple. Very simple goal. I want to end up looking like this. All right. So let's see. What do we have in this image here? We kind of have some funky texture, kind of grunginess. We have very splattery effects. We have big bright shiny things we have some blurriness right here a little splatter right here another little splatter right here so uh, oh, some wispy lines the wispy lines pretty important so uh, what I like to do is I always start out with the most texture based or background kind of thing and uh, usually I don't know how to begin that except to start with something again very simple a blob. blob. What, what's more simple than a blob? I'm going to turn down the, the spacing here because that'll make my lines smoother. Yes. Much better. So now I have this big giant blob that kind of looks like nothing. Uh, no idea how that's going to be a Photoshop brush, but I will show you. Um, something that I really like to use in Photoshop CS5. I don't remember if it exists in CS4 or CS3 or anything. It is called the dual brush, mainly because I haven't used CS3 or CS4. Um, and the dual brush will allow you to have a brush tip and then kind of a, a texture or another, you know, it'll, it'll make your brush look different. Let's just put it that way. So I'm going to use a kind of dual brush. I'm going to use a dual brush that is actually a combination of some of my brushes and this and I'm just selecting the different uh, 
kind of textures for my brush. There we go. There we go. You can see the dual brush action in here. And hopefully you can see how this would be useful to creating new brush sets. But uh, what I like to do for my brushes, instead of drawing additional things on here, I like to erase. So I select the eraser tool and I do the exact same thing. I do the dual brush except now with an eraser. That's a twist. And so where is my little... There we go. Turn the size up a little bit. And so that looks pretty cool. You're kind of just erasing stuff here. I'm pressing too hard. There we go. There we go. Again, my computer is really laggy, and so it'll take a little bit. Okay. Okay. We're getting somewhere. All right, this is looking not hopeless. So, uh, as you can see, I'm just I'm just paying attention to detail, kind of. I'm just I'm trying to fray all the edges, so that way it's kind of like an e evenly distributed, uh, kind of grungy feel. I'm trying to clean up a lot of the things that are touching the edges because. If something touches the edges, it'll look like it's been cut off in the final brush. Like if you want to know what what kind of uh, what I mean, I'll show you here. See how that's uh, see this right here. And if I just take the marquee tool and I cut it off, that's what it would look like in your brush. And that just looks plain ugly. And people will know you just got careless or lazy, and they will not use your brushes unless you're using them from yourself. And then I don't know why you would ever want to do that unless you know you're not going to be using that corner of your brush or something. Anyway, just a good idea to always clear the edges. And sometimes you miss little things because they're a really light shade of gray or something. That happens. Just redefine your brush later. Um, so anyway, now we kind of have a grungy looking texture around all of our edges. And it looks much better than the blob, at least in my opinion. So now we have the background kind of brush, and let's go ahead and define that. Highlight everything, go to Edit, Define Brush Preset, in the Tutorial 1, and there we go, we have our first brush. And uh, when I'm making brushes, I like to keep everything in the same document, so I'm just going to uh, make this invisible by clicking the visibility little eyeball there. Um, so let's make our more focal kind of brush. And what I mean by focal is it's the brush that you're going to be seeing in the center of the image, really. It's going to be, you know, kind of like the wispy lines or, or these little lines right here. You know, the thing that really stands out to you. Like, what stands out to me in this picture is these lines right here, the wispies, and just this white area right here. In fact, this whole thing stands out to me, but particularly I'm focusing right over here. Just kind of right along this, this area right here. So I want to make that kind of a brush. To make your little wispy lines, I use a Wacom Intuos 4 tablet, and I will provide a link to that, because it is a very nice device. And so, for me, it's pretty simple to make the little wispy lines, you just do that. That's kind of an ugly one right there, but as you can see, I can kind of just do whatever. And to do this on my tablet, I'm just kind of gently moving my tablet pen along the surface, kind of just gently moving it. I press firm and then I let go, press firm, and let go, press firm, and let go. And obviously you can get it so that way it's really smooth. And usually the more fluent your motion is, the smoother the line will be. And you can kind of get cool little wispies like that. Yeah, that's enough. So what about for you users that don't have a tablet? Well, to do that, um, it's a little more difficult, and actually I haven't had much experience doing this, so I am very bad at it, but if you can figure out a way to make it look good, that'd be awesome. I just um, use the pen tool, and you just, you know, I'm not going to explain how the pen tool works really, because I'm not the best person to explain that to you. Fill path. Here we go. I know what I'm doing. I'm professional. All right, so yeah, so now you kind of have a little reverse Nike-looking logo kind of thing. 
But you can see how that somewhat resembles the wispy lines. Only difference is it's a little easier to do the wispy lines, but you'll notice that when you use the pen tool, it looks a little bit more crisp. So actually, what you might be able to do is you could trace over the things that you draw with the pen tool, and they would look even crisper. It's actually a really good idea. You should try it sometime. I haven't tried it that often. You know, let's just work. Let's just work from the Nike sign here. Let's work from the from the, from the Nike resembling logo. It's not Nike. That'd be silly. So I'm gonna make more of my wispy lines, and this is all just part of the, the focal. The focal brush. The focal brush again, meaning the brush you're gonna pay attention to. The thing you're gonna pay attention to in the image. The background. Yeah, you're gonna pay attention to that too. But what are you gonna notice first? The background or this? So. Here's an interesting look looking uh, focal brush. So we're going to take it, define brush preset, tutorial 2. And now we have our focal and background brushes. And normally I would make a lot more brushes, at least 10 or 7 to a set. But for this example, I'm only going to make 3. And the third one is going to be a glowing version of the focal brush. Now, to make something glow, uh, I've covered that in a tutorial on my DeviantArt page, which I will put a link to. But to make a brush glow is a little different. And to do this, uh, to make it simp easier to see, to make it uh, more apparent, we're going to invert our colors, but we're not going to change the colors that we're using. We're going to keep using black because black will show up as white and white will show up as black on an inverted thing. See, I know what I'm talking about. Um, and we're going to select our uh, layer with the Nike logo kind of thing. We're going to duplicate it. And then on the layer below, not the layer that says layer 5 copy, we're going to do the layer below. We're going to go to effect. And I already have it up here, but we go to blur, Gaussian blur. And as you can see in the preview, it looks like it's glowing. And I usually set the radius anywhere between 2 and eh, maybe 10. 10 might be a little bit too much. Uh, just use your judgment. I'm going to put it on 7. And now when we take the invert away, this is what our brush looks like. This is how we want to define our brush because if we define it when it's inverted, it's actually going to use this entire square. Uh, the brush will just end up looking like a square with this as a hole in the middle of it, and we don't want that. So, select everything, just press Control A, and then do Define Brush Preset. Now, Tutorial 3. Now, we have our glowing brush. Glowing brush. There we go. Looks good. And so, now, let's make a little, little preview. This will look good. Okay. Let's make our background color. Make it black. Let's put a little gradient back there because it's not that bright. Because that would look fancy. And then select the brush tool. Let's take our textury brush, which is right here. And again, all new brushes get sent to the bottom and turn off the pressure sensitivity so I can just make a big old stamp. There's that. I'm going to change the layer style to a screen. Oh, that doesn't do too much. Um, I'm actually going to gonna select. This is a trick you can use. I uh, take the layer and what I do is I control click it and that you can see the little hand turns into a little finger with a selection box and it selects the entire area of whatever's in that layer if you didn't know that and then I'm just gonna make a new layer so I have the selection I'm gonna take the gradient tool and I'm gonna set it I wanna make this kind of a magenta or no I wanna make it orange That'd be more badass. and the reason I picked orange is because it's a color that looks good with red and so now that we have this whole area selected, whatever we fill 
whatever we fill it with will only be in this defined area. So I'm going to use the gradient, and I'm just kind of got I'm just kind of going to gently kind of gradient the areas with the radial gradi radial gradient. So you'll see that kind of gives it a certain effect. I'm going to change up the colors here a little bit just to even more so change, give it a distinct kind of look. So notice we didn't even use any layer styles or layer effects or anything. We just used some gradients in the selection tool, and now it looks completely different. And I'm going to see if that looks any better on linear dodge. Actually, it doesn't. Screen, no. Another thing that you might want to do is just kind of experiment with the different layer styles. Uh, typically good one, look, ones that look good are screen, linear dodge, or linear burn. Linear burn looks cool sometimes. Eh, not this time. And then once you mess around with those layer styles enough, you can kind of get a feel for what they do exactly and how they will look, which ones might be appropriate. So there's our background. And uh, now I'm going to make a new layer. We're going to use our focal brush now. And, uh, you know, this obviously isn't the best looking piece in the world. But I'm going to pick a bright color because we're going to make something, we're going to make it really bright. It's a glowing brush. I think this is the glowing one. No, this one's not the glowing one. All right. So put my glowing brush down there. There we go. And see how it appears to glow, and I didn't even do anything. This is just the brush by itself, and this is again because we used the Gaussian blur. And it looks black, and it looks like it has a shadow underneath it when it's black, but that's only because that's a dark color, and dark colors will appear to have shadows, while light colors will appear to glow. Isn't that something interesting? I'm put on linear dodge. Now it looks awesome. I told you linear dodge was was a cool one. And I'm just gonna use more gr more uh, radial gradients. Radial gradients kind of emphasize it, put it on linear dodge, and now it looks like it's a glowing kind of comet of death. And I love comets of death. They're pretty cool. And so yeah, that's kind of a light overview of how I go about making a, a preview image. So this could be a preview image for this brush set composed of three brushes. Uh, this is actually a very small preview image, I think. It's only 400, 500 pixels. Yeah, it's really small. Visit actuator.com and brusheasy.com. They have good Photoshop brushes at BrushEasy. And of course, Actuator is my website. I'll be blogging about stuff occasionally, letting you all know when new updates are coming. You post my art on there. And of course, I do commissions and whatnot. Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace out.